Now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. Well, Jello again, the Jack Benny program, actually the Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny, from 68 years ago, January 24th, 1954, and the shooting of Dan McGrew. And we thank you for joining us on this Monday, the 24th day of January. We have 342 days remaining until we get to 2023. Mississippi College, founded on this date in 1826, the first college in the state of Mississippi. James W. Marshall, finding gold at Sutter's Mill near Sacramento in 1848, the beginning of the California Gold Rush. Robert Baden Powell began the Boy Scout movement on this date in 1908. Director Alfred Hitchcock released his first film, The Pleasure Garden in England, in 1927. President Roosevelt and Winston Churchill concluded the Casablanca Conference on this date in 1943. In 1972, Japanese Sergeant Sochi Yokoi found hiding in a Guam jungle where he had been in hiding since 1944 when U.S. forces liberated the island during World War II. The uh, first Apple Macintosh went on sale on this date in 1984, and in 1986, the Voyager 2 passed within uh, 50,000 miles of Uranus. It is very likely that there will be another, uh, not be another mission to Uranus for a couple centuries. And so this is it. This will be in the history books. This will be in the encyclopedias for the next uh, couple hundred years. A NASA spokesman on uh, the passing of uh, Uranus by Voyager 2 in 1986. Mass murderer Ted Bundy was executed in the electric chair in Stark, Florida on this date in 1989. Well-meaning, decent people will condemn behavior of a Ted Bundy while they're walking past a, a, a magazine rack full of the very kinds of things that send young kids down the road to be Ted Bundy's. That's the irony. Bundy received two death sentences for three murders in Florida, the exact number thought to be more than 30. It was on this date in 1998 that Pope John Paul II visited Cuba. The Pope and uh, Fidel Castro now on the platform as the Pope greets the crowd, waving with his right hand, the crowd in turn waving Cuban and Vatican flags. Reporter Jim Hickey. It was on this date in 2003 the Department of Homeland Security officially began operation. The law creating the United States Department of Homeland Security comes into effect. And now this department has its first secretary, Thomas Joseph Ridge. President George W. Bush. And it was in 2006 Disney agreed to purchase Pixar in an all-cash deal, making Steve Jobs the largest shareholder in Disney. Making great content is the most important thing we can do as a company. And making great feature animation is incredibly important. If you look at the history of the company, during the periods of time that we have been uh, at the top of our game in feature animation, the company has really flourished. Passing away on this date in history, the founder of the Bolshevik Party, father of the revolution, Vladimir Lenin. Also, uh, Winston Churchill passing away on this date. Actor J. Carol Nash, best known to our radio listeners uh, from uh, Life with Luigi. Uh, Larry Fine, actor, comedian of the Three Stooges. George Cukor, the film director. The founder of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard. Actor-singer Gordon McRae, Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall, and actor Pernell Roberts. Happy birthday today to the late Ernest Borgnine, evangelist Oral Roberts, musician Warren Zevon, and the Werewolves of London, John Belushi, and wrestler Mike Awesome. Birthday number 86 for the Cajun fiddler Doug Kershaw, 
Musician Ray Stevens is 83, who sadly lost his wife on uh, New Year's Eve. Very, very sad. But Ray Stevens still with us, still making music at 83. Singer Neil Diamond, 81, as is singer Aaron Neville. Russian comedian Yakov Smirnov, who uh, I, I've told the story before of how uh, Pat Paulson uh, told a joke on my morning show down in Florida uh, when we were on the old People's Radio Network doing a national morning show that uh, Yakov Smirnov was a Russian spy, and they blew up the phones where uh, <laughs> where Pat Paulson was playing. He had to come on another show to apologize. Anyway, some of Smirnov's lines... I like parades without missiles in them. I'll take Bullwinkle to a tank any day. In every country, they make fun of the city, of cities. If you In the U.S., you make fun of Cleveland. In Russia, we make fun of Cleveland. Uh, here you have American Express card. Don't leave home without it. In Russia, we have Russian Express card. Don't leave home. Yakov Smirnov, 71 years old today. Uh, actress Nastasa Kinski is uh, 61. Gymnast Mary Lou Retton, 54. From The Last Man on Earth, Kristen Schaal, very funny lady, 44. From The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Tatiana Ali is 43. And from The O.C., Misha Barton is 36. Those some of the people who celebrate the 24th day of January is their birthday. And if this happens to be your birthday... Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Mrs. Miller. We go back 68 years, January 24th, 1954. Jack Benny on this Monday, Classic Radio Theater on your favorite station. Mike Lindell has set out another big sale for listeners. It's the first of the year bedding sale. Half price on the MyPillow sleepwear, the wonderful Giza Dream Sheets, the two-inch mattress toppers. It's like a MyPillow for the rest of your body. Also, the blankets and quilts and comforters, they are all half price right now. 50% off if you use our promo code USA. Also, big overstock. If you know somebody who's expecting the body pillow, it's regularly $120. It's now $39.95. Also, select pillows, couch pillows, and individual towels are deeply discounted. Go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio listener square, use my promo code USA, or call 1-800-951-8175. The first of the year betting sale at MyPillow.com. Promo code USA. Somebody will probably correct me on this, but I find it hard to believe that there would be any other entertainer, singer, songwriter, whatever, who still has a fan club after being deceased for almost 50 years. And yet there is still a very active Jack Benny fan club that you can find at jackbenny.org. Laura Leibowitz handling that up. They also have a, a very active Facebook page where they post more Jack Benny shows in a day than I do in a month. But uh, if you would, uh, if, you, if, if Jack uh, interests you and excites you and all of that, check out jackbenny.org. Uh, Laura is still uh, trying to fundraise to pay for the Maxwell. Uh, that is uh, still ongoing. Yes, the Maxwell, the one that Jack wrote in many movies, and they have documentation to back that up. So uh, if you would like to help them with that, go there too, jackbenny.org. Uh, by the way, this is Wyatt Cox. This is Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. We are going to listen to Jack Benny this hour, an episode from 68 years ago, January 24th, 1954, and the shooting of Dan McGrew, eventually. Jack Benny.
Agony with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly. Now, who else? Ladies and gentlemen, tonight Jack Benny and his entire cast leave for New York, where they'll do one television and two radio shows. As we look in on Jack's home in Beverly Hills, Rochester is taking care of the packing for the trip. Now let's see if everything's packed. Slippers, smoking jacket, silk robe, one full dress suit, dinner jacket, two tuxedos, silk scarf, gloves, white tie, and spats. Well, I guess that's about all. Now I better pack Mr. Benny's things. <laughs> I'm glad I convinced him to go out and buy some luggage for this trip. The boss really got a bargain in this airplane luggage buying it second hand. There's no doubt but it's genuine airplane luggage. It used to belong to Orville Wright. <laughs> well, let's see. Rochester, how are you getting along with my packing? Fine, boss. I'm almost done. Did you pack all my toilet articles? Uh-huh. And I made sure I put in your hair oil, dandruff remover, military brushes, and comb. Good. They're not necessary, but they're great for your morale. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I'm going in the den and uh, look for some books to take on the train. Well, let's see. What else will Mr. Benny want to take along with him to New York? It'll be pretty cold there. I, I'd better pack some of his long underwear. <laughs> Here they are. He sure got a lot of long underwear. <laughs> I'll never forget that time he put a pair on backwards. He looked like a sailor. <laughs> hey, what's this? This pair has the legs cut off just below the knees. Oh yes, now I remember. Mr. Benny did that in Palm Springs. He wanted people to think they were pedal pushers. <laughs> well, I better see it. Here, Rochester, put these books in my bag. Yes, sir. Wait a minute, boss. Didn't you read this book when it first came out? Einstein's Theory of Relativity? Uh-huh. I distinctly remember it had 492 pages. Those numbers were the only things I understood. <laughs> hmm, Einstein's theory of relativity. Yeah, I won't read it again. I'll wait till they make a picture out of it. <laughs> I understand they're going to make it in the square root of 3D. <laughs> now, Rochester, don't forget to take along my violin. You taking that thing to New York with you? <laughs> Yes, and there's always the possibility it might get lost or damaged. So see that my insurance policy with Lloyd's of London is paid up. You got your violin insured with Lloyd's of London? Yes, why? I thought anything that moans like that would have the blue cross. <laughs> Rochester, never mind being a musical critic. I'm going to take my violin. Shall I answer the door? No, you finish packing. I'll get it. Gee, I can hardly wait to get on that train. Coming, coming. Oh, oh, hello, Don. Hello, Jack. Come on in. Don, I didn't think I'd see you till we got to the station. Jack, what I have to talk to you about can't wait. Why? What's the matter? It's about the accommodations. You got me on the super chief. Well, what's wrong with them? Me in an upper berth? <laughs> Don, everybody on the show has an upper berth. Well, I don't like it. Now, wait a minute, Don. The last time we went to New York, how did you go? You shipped me by freight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot. I made a good deal with the railroad then. Yeah, yeah, that was the most humiliating trip I ever took. Humiliating? Why? 
When the train stopped in Chicago, they opened the door and some guy stamped Swift and Company on me. <laughs> All right, grade A. If it'll make you happy, I'll get you a compartment. Well, that's better. Boss, I've got everything all packed and ready. Good, good. Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Bob Crosby. Oh, hello, Bob. What is it? Well, June, the kids are all going to the station to see me off, so I'll have a car full. And, well, I wondered if you'd mind giving Frank Remley a lift to the station. Oh, of course. I'll be glad to. Remley, uh, where shall I pick him up? Under the arms, like we always do. <laughs> Yes, yes, well... <laughs> I'll see you at the station. Goodbye, Bob. So long. <laughs> well, Jenny, that takes care of Remley. Jack's going to take him to the station. Oh, is Frankie going on the same train with you? Oh, yeah, we all, uh, all have upper berths, except Bagby, the piano player. He has a compartment. A compartment? Mm -hmm. Well, why should Bagby have such nice accommodations when everyone else has an upper berth? Well, Junie, you need uh, extra room when you're handcuffed to a deputy sheriff. <laughs> For a piano player, he can get into more trouble. Yeah. Say, did you pack my shirts and my ties? Yes, everything's ready. Say, I better take along some extra money. Money? Don't you get an expense account while you travel with a show? Well, yes. Jack gives us each $5 a day. <laughs> $5 a day? That'll hardly pay for your hotel room. What about food? Well, Jack has that all figured out. One day I eat and one day I sleep. <laughs> I'd better get my heavy coat. You know, it's cold back east, yes. honey. Well, I put it by your luggage. Oh, by the way, Bob, didn't I hear some talk that President Eisenhower is going to appear on Jack's radio show next week? That's right. Jack is dedicating an entire program to the Red Cross. Oh, gee, it's nice of Jack to do that. Well, it's no more than fair. Look at all the blood that they've given him. <laughs> Well, I guess we've got almost everything packed, eh, Rochester? Yes, sir. How many sandwiches do you want me to make up for the train? None. None? No, this trip I'm going to eat all my meals in the diner. Well, I better take my camera. All the papers will want pictures of this. <laughs> Look, don't be so funny. Now, you put my luggage in the car and make sure all the doors and windows are shut. Oh, I got to go down to my vault and get some money for the trip. <laughs> Don, will you pick up Frankie Remley? Sure, Jack. See you on the train. Yeah, I'll be... I'm going out the vault. I'll be right back, Rochester. <laughs> now to cross the bridge over the moat. <laughs> Gosh, look at that alligator. <laughs> so strong and powerful. He's been very valuable to me, too. Three wallets and a belt, and he's still as healthy as ever. <laughs> Hope he forgets by next Christmas. He's getting wise to me when I come in here with a piece of meat in one hand and a can of ether in the other. <laughs> Down, boy. See you later.
Halt, who goes there, friend or foe? A uh, friend. What's the password? Luckies taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Mm, lucky strike, mm, lucky strike. <laughs> Mr. Benny. Yes, Ed. Uh, nice seeing you again. Thank you. How are things on the outside? Is it still summer? No, no, Ed. It's February. Oh, yes. That follows September. No, no, Ed. February follows January. January? Yeah. That's a new one on me. <laughs> well, anyway, it's February. How have you been, Ed? Oh, Pretty good. Say, Mr. Benny, I hate to complain, but it's awfully cold down here. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Ed. The next time I come down, I'll bring a stove. Well, if it's all the same to you, I'd rather have clothes. <laughs> January 24th, 1954, Jack Benny on Classic Radio Theater. Oh, come on, I hate you. You have no right to speak to me. You're stupid, you're evil. You believe in your God, guns, and gold. You shouldn't have the right to vote. We must fix this disgusting country now. We want socialism now. Whoa there, little fella. Our U.S. Constitution protects your right to say these things, even if they are drivel. Our founders believed in our inalienable rights granted by God, not some mafia. Our Bill of Rights protects your personal freedoms, your absolute right to speak to others, whether loving and kind or hateful and stupid. Utopia doesn't exist. It only destroys. Millions of innocents slaughtered by the communists in Cambodia, China, and the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. And millions of people were gassed by Hitler's National Socialist Party. Where do you stand? Help us save the Constitution and restore our American dream. Go to SaveMyFreedom.com. That's SaveMyFreedom.com. Brought to you by the American Media Council. And thank you for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite station. And we're listening to Jack Benny this hour. An episode from Sunday... January 24th, 1954, in the newspapers of that Sunday, 68 years ago, these were some of the headlines. <laughs> Russia's VM Molotov flew into Berlin in a Siberian-like snowstorm yesterday and immediately suggested a full voice for Red China in the Foreign Minister's Conference opening in Berlin tomorrow. His suggestion had no prospect of acceptance. It may well produce the first major disagreement of the Big Four in the conference. A few hours after Molotov made his bid, American officials said they wanted no part of it. They reported the Western minister standing firm in the conviction the conference must deal with the problems of Germany and Austria if it's to achieve its purpose, and that these are not the primary concern of Peiping. Amid signs of a major mix-up on high levels, the Marine Corps and Army opened formal probes yesterday of the actions of a colonel and corporal while they were prisoners of the Chinese Communists. The Army disclosed Friday night it had filed court-martial charges against Corporal Edward S. Dickinson, the 23-year-old G.I. from Crackers Neck, Virginia, who at first decided to stay with the Communists in Korea, then changed his mind and came home. Dickinson accused of unlawful dealings with the enemy and currying favor with his communist captors to the detriment of fellow prisoners. Well, once that announcement got out, the Defense Department figured it was no use holding the Marine Corps back. So the Corps announced yesterday a court of inquiry had been formed to investigate the case of Colonel Frank H. Schwabel, Marine Corps uh, officer who made a false confession while prisoner of war about participating in germ warfare. He announced the confession after his release in the Korean War exchange. All signs pointed today to a toughening attitude by the Allied side toward 21 Americans of Britain and 325 South Koreans who are sticking it out in a pro-red camp 
although it now is unlocked and virtually unguarded. General John E. Hull, U.N. Far East commander, was known to feel the men, prisoners of the Reds refused to take back, are no longer any concern of his command with the passing yesterday of the armistice deadline for processing bulky repatriates. <laughs> tax law changes already proposed by the House Ways and Means Committee would save taxpayers almost a billion dollars. The total could reach three billion if other proposed changes are enacted. The committee, with President Eisenhower's full approval, is overhauling the tax structure. Thus far, it's approved nine of the 25 changes suggested by the president in his budget message. There also have been other revisions. (laughs) Administration leaders yesterday put a Monday deadline on efforts to compromise with the Republican senator from Ohio, Bricker, on a proposal to rewrite the Constitution's treaty-making provisions. Senator Noland of California, the GOP floor leader, said he will report to President Eisenhower and House leaders tomorrow morning at a White House conference on weekend efforts to reach an agreement. (laughs) Reports spread in parliamentary circles yesterday that Prime Minister Winston Churchill may retire when Queen Elizabeth returns from her world tour in mid-May. If he does, it's believed the Duke may award with a dukedom his two generations of serving under six sovereigns. A couple of police stories. When the snow began pelting Washington, an 11-year-old boy rang up police headquarters in the district to see if the schools would be open. The headquarters operator announced in the usual monotone, Do you have a complaint? Youngster said, That depends. Depends on what? Whether there's school. There's no school. No complaint then, thank you. Oh, and in Philadelphia, Marty Waterman parked his car in front of the variety, his variety store. Well, remembering the mechanics of the parking meter, he dashed out to put another nickel in the slot, but he was too late. There was already a parking ticket on the windshield, but attached to it was a cigar and a note which read, My wife had a baby today, signed the cop on the beat. And in Frankfurt, Indiana, the sign that said, through these doors past the world's finest people came down from Don Seeger's corner tavern at Mulberry. Seeger yanked it down in disgust after finding the tavern had been entered through the front door and about 400 bucks taken from the safe. <laughs> and though some of the day's top news stories as reported in the newspapers of Sunday, January 24th, 1954. On your radio, Jack Benny, the conclusion of which you'll hear next on this Monday Classic Radio Theater on your favorite station. Here's some great news. If you miss the deadline to sign up for health insurance or if, like a lot of people, you just have a plan you're not happy with, you still have a choice. It's called MediShare. It's a Christian healthcare sharing program. There are more than 400,000 members now, and they love it. In fact, MediShare has double the customer satisfaction rate compared to that of health insurance. And MediShare really is the gold standard when it comes to healthcare sharing. It's been around more than 25 years. Members have shared more than $4 billion of each other's medical bills. Plus, MediShare is for you. It has saved its members billions by advocating on their behalf. Best of all, the typical savings for a family is around $6,000 a year. So if you think you're stuck with a high-cost health plan that doesn't have much to offer, think again. MediShare has a 98% customer satisfaction rating, and you are invited to be part of it. Call now. 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. 833-34-BIBLE. Well, on our Tuesday Classic Radio Theater crime drama, Big Town, starring Edward Polly, the crusading editor of the Illustrated Press. In an episode from 73 years ago, January 25th, 1949, The Fatal Fix. Willie the Weep sees a young girl attacked on a big town dock. She's been slashed by Shiv the Knife to keep a basketball fix racket under wraps. That's on Tuesday's Classic Radio Theater. Edward Polly actually did a quite a good job in succeeding Edward G. Robinson on uh, Big Town. But we'll hear that tomorrow on Classic Radio Theater. But right now, the conclusion of the Jack Benny Show, 68 years ago today, January 24th, 1954. Say, Mr. Benny, I hate to complain, but it's awfully cold down here. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Ed. The next time I come down, I'll bring a stove. <laughs> well, if it's all the same to you, I'd rather have clothes. <laughs> Oh, 
well, I'll send some down. I gotta open the safe and get some money. Shall I lie down so you can give me the ether again? <laughs> no, no, Ed, you can watch this time. Well, let me see, the combination is right to 45, left to 60, back to 15, then left to 110. There. Let's see how much money I need. There, this ought to be enough. Gosh, look at that big pile of money way in the back of the safe. Boy, if the South had won, I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> well, I better close the safe. Mr. Benny, you sure took out a lot of money this time. Yes, Ed, besides going on a trip... You see, on March 15th, I have to send my income tax to the government. All the way to Mexico City, huh? Eh? No, 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 Ed. California is a state now. <laughs> well, so long, Ed. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Benny. <laughs> oh, Gesundheit, Ed. I won't forget the clothes. Uh, no. Goodbye. <laughs> Here's the station, Rochester. You park the car and take care of the baggage. I'll go on in. Yes, sir. And don't be late. The super chief leaves in about 15 minutes. I gotta go to that drugstore and get myself a few things. What do you have to get? Some toothpaste, vitamin pills, and uh, shampoo. Uh, wait a minute, Rochester. Isn't that a Rexall drugstore? Yeah, why? Well, they're having a one-cent sale. Here's three cents. Get me the same. <laughs> I'll see you in the station. Train now leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and to Kananga. Oh, hi, Jack. Oh, hello, Bob. Well, we'll be on our way pretty soon. Yep. I'll see you on... Bob, why are you flipping that coin? Well, I'm trying to decide what to do on my first night in New York, eat or sleep. Oh, oh. Well, I got to go over to the window. I forgot to buy a ticket for my producer. You know? Train now arriving on track four from San Francisco. Train now arriving on track six from San Diego. Engine now arriving on track three from Las Vegas. <laughs> Boy, did that conductor have bad luck. Oh, hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Don. Don, I'll see you on the train. I gotta go over the ticket window. Okay, Jack. Attention, please. Attention. The train standing on track nine will not leave the station. The engineer refuses to travel for a lousy five dollars a day. <laughs> now, let's see. Oh, that's the ticket window over there. Hi, Rube. <laughs> huh? Oh, it's my friend from Calabasas. Now, what are you doing here in Los Angeles? Rubbing my eyes, same as everybody else. <laughs> oh, that's, uh... For a city that don't grow nothing, you sure got a lot of smudging going on here. <laughs> yeah. 
Flash, uh, where are you going? No place. I just arrived from Calabasas. Oh. How are things out there? Oh, pretty good. Been making speeches all month. Speeches? Yep, I ran for mayor. The election was yesterday. Mayor of Calabasas. Uh, how'd you make out? I don't know. We're still waiting for the rural vote to come in. <laughs> Of course, the rural vote. Well, tell me, did you put on a good campaign? Oh, yes, yes. I went around to each farmer individually and asked him what his biggest problem was. I see. And what is the farmer's biggest problem? Traveling salesman. <laughs> uh, well, Secretary Benson will certainly be glad to hear that. Well, I better get going. I have to round up my wife. Oh, your wife's with you? Huh? Yeah, she's on a shopping spree. Every time she comes to the city, she goes hog wild. No kidding. Last year, she bought 120 hogs. <laughs> Heard Spade Cooley pull that one. <laughs> you, uh, you ought to catch that boy. Now there's a comedian. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, so long, Ruth. So long. So long. <laughs> I don't get it. He likes Spade Cooley and he calls me Rube. <laughs> well, I better go get that ticket. Attention, please. All newspaper men and reporters, attention. Now arriving from Florida, Barbara Hutton and Porfirio Rubirosa. They are arriving on trains marked his and hers. <laughs> well, this must be the window. Oh, yeah, that man there, I guess, is the ticket agent. Oh, mister, mister. Yeah! <laughs> Holy, are you the ticket agent? No, I'm a groundhog. I came out, saw my shadow, and ran back in here. <laughs> well, I'd like to buy a ticket to New York. Well, I can only sell you a ticket to San Francisco. I just sold the man ahead of you a ticket to New York. Well, what's that got to do with it? You can sell me a ticket to New York, can't you? I can, but I won't. <laughs> Why not? I like to keep my stacks even. <laughs> well, that's the silliest thing. Uh, excuse me, sir. Huh? Uh, I'm in a terrible hurry. Would you mind if I go ahead of you? Well... No, I, I guess not. Thank you. Yes, sir. What can I do for you, sir? Uh, I'd like to buy a ticket to Constantinople. <laughs> oh, I'm awfully sorry, but you can't buy a ticket to Constantinople. Why not? Well, you see, Istanbul was Constantinople. Now it's Istanbul, not Constantinople. <laughs> look, But look. I've got to meet my girl in Constantinople. Uh, every gal in Constantinople lives in Istanbul, not Constantinople. <laughs> So if you've a date in Constantinople, Look. she'll be waiting in Istanbul. <laughs> Look, mister. Well, that's confusing. Well, I don't know why. Even old New York was once New Amsterdam. <laughs> well, why do they change it? I can't say. People just liked it better that way. <laughs> but I want to go back to Constantinople. But you can't go back to Constantinople. Now it's Istanbul, not Constantinople. <laughs> Gee, why did Constantinople get the word? That's nobody's business but the Turks. <laughs> oh. Here's your ticket to Istanbul. <laughs> oh, thank you, and goodbye. <laughs> I don't know why I always have to get into these kind of spots. Train now arriving on track nine with 75 carloads of Florida oranges. 
Train now departing on track nine with 75 carloads of carloads. <laughs> Now, look, clerk, you better sell me a ticket to New York or I'll report you. Oh, all right. Is the ticket for you? No, it's for my producer. Very well. Uh, do you want this ticket on the El Capitan or the Super Chief? Well, let's see. I'm on the Super Chief, and the fare on that is $143. Yeah, that's right. And if he goes on the El Capitan, it'll be $175. Now, just a minute. I happen to know that the Super Chief is more expensive than the El Capitan. Not when you're on it. <laughs> <laughs> now, cut that out. Attention, please. The Super Chief is now departing. Hey, Jack, Jack, hurry, hurry. Coming, Don, coming. <laughs> I just made it. Yeah, you sure did. You know, mister, it's nice being on the Super Chief, isn't it? Yeah, but I hate to think what's going to happen in a few minutes. Why? I'm handcuffed to a piano player who got on the El Capitan. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you like that? Chester, we're on our way to New York. Yeah, you've got a pretty busy schedule when we get there, haven't you? That's right. I'm not only doing two radio shows, but I'm also doing a television program next week with Helen Hayes. Then I also have to play a big benefit. A benefit? Who for, boss? My cast. Some of them would like to eat and sleep. <laughs> Good night, Paul. There you go, January 24th, 1954, 68 years ago, Jack Benny on Classic Radio Theater. By the way, I had a couple of other in-the-back-of-the-paper stories today I wanted to pass along to you from Denver. And this is going back January 24th, 1954. Mrs. Mar Marion E. Weir sued her husband in district court and was granted a restraining order against him after testifying, he came home one night and proceeded to pour ketchup in my hair and mash a banana in my face. That, yeah. And uh, in Jersey City, New Jersey, the ferry boat Lackawanna slip wasn't showing the other morning as the Jersey Central Ferry plane field began to leave its slip in pea soup fog at 8.45 a.m., a huge bulk loomed out of the mist about 50 feet out in the Hudson River. It was the Lackawanna, which ordinarily docks in Hoboken at the Lackawanna Railroad berth. A Plainfield deckhand rushed out with a megaphone saying, Ahoy, Lackawanna, is it the Jersey slip you want? A moment of silence, a voice yelled back, No, and the Lackawanna backed, <laughs> hurried backwater out into the murk, docking later at its own slip. Oops. Don't slip up and miss a, a thing we have here. Visit our webpage, classicradio.stream. There you can find out all of our social media contacts, learn more about Classic Radio Collecting. You can contact me there as well. Classicradio.stream. Our shows are also available just about anywhere podcasts are served. Search for Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. That's me. I'm Wyatt Cox. Thank this station. Support the advertisers. And tell all your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater on your favorite radio station. <laughs>